This is what it says. It says, all men dream, but not equally. Those who dream by night, the dusty recesses of their minds, wake up in the day to find it was a vanity. But the dreamers of the day are dangerous men, for they may act their dreams with open eyes to make it possible. Yeah. The people who are here in this room, you guys are the dreamers of the day. Uh, funnel hackers, the dreamers of the day. And I even think about this, like with our community, we have over 100,000 active ClickFunnels members. We've got millions of people on our email list and social, but you are the 5,000 who are the most excited, the most passionate, the ones who were willing to leave everything, leave jobs, leave family, everyone, to come here and be part of this because you have a dream. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. That's resistance. How many of you guys are like, oh, I gotta write a blog post or I gotta record a podcast or something, you're about to do it, right? And you're like, oh, I don't want to, I'm tired. Oh, I'm gonna go check my email. Oh, I'm gonna do something like, that's resistance. It's coming from inside, it's your brain trying to do anything except the thing you're actually supposed to be doing, okay? Resistance is all the time in every single situation, probably, I mean, even today, for example, I think I probably hit it 12 or 13 times before I came on stage. In fact, right before that thing went up, Resistance is like, get out of here, Russell. You are not ready for this. <laughs> there are so many people out there who are going to make fun of you. What if you trip? Like, you're wearing a jacket, you're wearing white jackets, like, you feel like all the things, like, freaking out, right? It's a beautiful jacket, though. The very first thing our conscious brain is supposed to do is to figure out our definite purpose. Okay? What is the thing that we are trying to do? What is the result we're looking for? What is our purpose? Okay? Um, when you start reading Napoleon Hill and read all his books, his manuscripts, it's interesting because almost every single one of his books, um, he has different laws of success, and we have Think and Grow Rich, all these different books, but almost every single time he starts the book talking about this one principle, which is having a definite purpose. You have to have a definite purpose. If you don't have a definite purpose, you're just wandering around in the, in the doing nothing, right? The reason why most people don't succeed in life is they have no definite purpose. So because of that, they're in the hypnotic rhythm. They're just going circular, they're not moving towards anything. and then I spot with my wife. The most important thing is focus on the people. As you focus on the people, it all comes back. Thank you guys for your way. Thank you for your way. I'm going to talk about the difference between a movement and a business. You see, a business, that's just an organization that provides services in exchange for clients, or if, if, to clients in exchange for money, right? Okay, but a movement, on the other hand, a movement is a purpose-driven community with a common identity striving to fulfill a common purpose. Okay? Yes. But a business... You see, it's defined by handbooks and SOPs and dashboards and HR departments, right? But a movement instead, you guys, a movement is defined by transformation, by a sense of belonging, by a deep commitment to your purpose. Okay, businesses, they come with side effects like boredom and severe cases of the Monday. And I never understood what are the bad things, let's go. right? That's what a business is, but a movement, you see, its side effects include high amounts of motivation, enthusiasm, and inspiration. Now, funnel hackers, you guys are on a mission, are you not? A mission to change yeah. the world, yes? yes? In our world, our empire builders are on a mission to master the conversation of money. Now look, in our world, our people, they climb mountains, they overcome challenges, all in the name of rising up and living free. This identity runs so deep. That Dan, you can see on this picture, when he had his first child, he took his shirt to the hospital. And when the nurse handed him his new baby son, he leaned down and he whispered into that little child's ear, son, in this family, we rise up and we live free. Right? So the one thing that made us uncopyable by our competitors, even though they've tried. So when we got into business, we were focused on results. We thought if we got the best results, then people would line up and buy from us. And nothing else really mattered. And that was the key to business, right? 
So in our world, that was rate of return. So we focused on the rate of return that we could get from clients, and we were the best. We got amazing results for our clients. How many of you guys have ever felt like this before? I'm so good at what I do, but no one cares. Have you ever felt that before? How many of you have ever felt even worse than that? I feel called to do what I'm doing, but yet I still continue to fail. How many of you felt that? Maybe that's what brought you here to this event. And why we learned that results are actually required. We learned that there was such a deeper foundation. You see, when you build results on this foundation, everything changes. Because if you do not, then no one is even going to get the opportunity to get the results that you can deliver. Businesses get this wrong because they spend all of their time bragging about their results. Bestseller this, fastest growth that, industry leader whatever, okay? In order to create belief in the marketplace about their business. But movements do it differently, okay? Movements instead focus on something different. When we came to Funnel Hacking Live the first time, we were just confused. Why was Russell giving people gold records? I thought this was a marketing conference. Mm -hmm. Year two, we came back excited because we kind of figured out. We were drinking the Kool-Aid at that point, okay? But year three, we came back. We're actually a little embarrassed to say we came back jealous. Not color didn't look very good on us because we hadn't got it yet. And that year, we almost didn't go to the awards ceremony. But last second, we decided to go in there and sit and watch. And as we watched people, person after person stand up, we actually saw somebody go up who sells retirees hot dog cart opportunities. That guy did a million dollars. <laughs> that guy. If that guy could do it, something transformed inside of us. Why does Russell bring people like Tony Robbins to ClickFunnels? That dude knows absolutely nothing about funnels. But what does he know? He knows transformation. My friends, this is what Tony Robbins says. The strongest force in the human personality is the need to stay consistent with how we define ourselves. When we bring people to our events, guess what we do with them? We take them out into the mountains at 5 a.m. in the morning. It doesn't matter if it's raining, if it's snowing, if it's dark. Nothing will stop us. We arm them with headlamps and they are scared to death to go on these crazy hikes that we take them on. What does it have to do with investing? Nothing. But it has everything to do with the transformation required to be empowered with money, the product that we're bringing to the table. So, Funnel Hacking Live! Get on your feet! Put your hands together! Help me welcome to the stage, Mr. Perry Belcher! Has anybody read Traffic Secrets? Is that it, really? Anybody else? Okay. In Traffic Secrets, the very first line of the book says, there's a storm coming. Now, what was Russell talking about when he said there's a storm coming? Well, he's talking about this, right? <laughs> he said that if your business is built entirely off of Facebook ads, then Mark Zuckerberg, or Xanos, as he likes to call him, is probably gonna come along, he's gonna make a change to the algorithm, He's gonna snap his fingers and wipe out half the internet marketers overnight. And so I remember hearing this over and over again. You gotta publish, you gotta publish, you gotta do it. And going, yes, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. This time I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna be consistent. And then I just wouldn't. <laughs> Anybody here ever heard before that you should publish every single day and you just can't bring yourself to do it consistently? Yes. Anybody, my people? Yes. All right, good, I knew I was in the right room. So why is this? Why is it so hard? Well, the thing with content is that it takes a lot of time. It's slow, right? It takes effort and energy. And like, why do that when you can just plug some money into ads and get leads immediately? Like as entrepreneurs, we're taught to pay for speed, right? And this is how I ran my entire business. I ignored what Russell said. I did this, I just ran the ads. And how do you guys think that went for me? Good or bad? No, it actually went really great for a long time. I joined the Two Comic Club X pro program, started learning from my coaches, I got my first Two Comic Club award, and I ended up joining the Inner Circle. So everything was going great. And then almost immediately after making my $50,000 payment to the Inner Circle, guess what happened? Oh snap. <laughs> Things changed. 
And uh, ad costs started skyrocketing, things went crazy, and if I'm being honest with you, I ran my business into the ground. Three things you can do when you're selling something to close more sales. I see so many entrepreneurs struggling with their conversion percentages when they're selling something. So here are my top three tips. Number one, stop being so needy. When people feel your neediness for the sale, they don't want to buy. Have the attitude, buy or don't buy, baby. I'm good. If you'll stop being so needy, people will start buying more. Number two, slow down when you get to your offer. I see so many entrepreneurs get so nervous pants when they start to go into the pitch and it freaks the audience out. So slow down and women lower your tone of voice. There are studies that show when women go into a higher register, it starts to irritate the audience. Number three, don't be afraid to challenge the audience or the prospect on the call. What do I mean? In the book, The Challenger Sale, the author says that the number one thing that prospects want is to be challenged. They said what you're going for is for people to say, wow, I never thought about it like that. So bring a new insight, bring a new strategy, bring a new play to the game and I guarantee you will start to close more sales. I wrote this book recently called Create Don't Capture. If you guys have one of these on your seats, will you put it up in the air for me? <laughs> All right, look around. Everything that I'm about to show you, this book is your guidebook. It goes in depth into my entire framework, how to create content how to create compelling videos, how to go viral, how to make money from your followers, how to grow your business online. But it goes so much deeper than that because it's not just about the how of creating content, it's about the why. What does it mean in today's day and age to be a content creator? Now this book hasn't come out yet, but I wanted you guys to be the first to be able to read it. So I paid out of my own pocket, all fortune to put 5,000 copies to give it to everyone here for free. Primer break del día, son las 5.30 de la tarde. Estamos en la sala de conferencias desde las 12 y no llevé suficientes snacks, pero no importa porque valió la pena, estuvo realmente increíble hasta ahora el evento. Los speakers todos han aportado muchísimo valor. Espero que disfrutes los pedacitos de, de, de las charlas que compartí aquí contigo en el blog. Sol, querida, ¿qué te pareció hasta ahora el primer día, lo que hemos visto hasta aquí de Funnel Hacking. O sea, la cabeza me va a estallar <risa> entre el hambre, pero entre el hambre. lo más espectacular, tanta información, de verdad, el primer día ha sido increíble. 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 ¿Cuál fue el speaker que más te gustó hasta ahora? Wow. Bueno, los tres estuvieron espectaculares. Pero muy bueno. Vimos a Perry Belcher. Perry Belcher, Eric, Eric, Eric Tain. Y después los otros chicos se me olvidaron. Ay, sí, los otros chicos el... se nos olvidó. Pero sí. los, estuvieron los tres espectaculares. Muy bueno. Y por supuesto lo que compartió Russell hasta aquí, buenísimo. Ahora vamos a ir a comer algo porque nos estamos a punto de desmayar. Y luego volvemos a ver a Joko, que nunca lo he visto hablar en realidad, así que no. vamos a ver qué tal. Pero es parte de la experiencia. Es parte de la experiencia. Nos vemos en un ratito. And that bad CEO leader would stand up and he'd say, I'll tell you what happened. Okay, first of all, Assault team leader, you didn't bring enough people on that mission. You didn't bring enough people for that target. And it took you forever because you didn't bring enough people. Next time you better figure out how to do your job. And then you, in charge of the Humvees, you didn't know where to come pick us up with all the Humvees. That's the only piece of information that you needed and you didn't have it. That's pathetic. And then sniper team leader, You never told me where you and your team were. That caused all kinds of confusion out there. It's ridiculous. So if we're going to do any better, you better figure out how to do your job. You better get a grip on reality and you better square yourself away. We have to be balanced. And there's an infinite number of these types of dichotomies. And a lot of them are personal to you. There's some people out there that are naturally a over communicate. Some of you don't communicate enough. You've got to know what your tendency is. And you've got to push back against that tendency. Some of you sit around and plan, 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 and never execute. If that's your tendency, you've got to push back against that. You've got to know yourself. And there's an infinite, like I said, an infinite number of these dichotomies. One of my favorite 
is discipline and freedom. Discipline and freedom. Obviously, these are opposites. On one side, you've got discipline, which is a rigid, structured way of doing things. On the other side, you've got freedom, which is we need to do whatever we want. And what does everybody want out of those two? Of course, we all want freedom. Best example, which I'm pretty sure everyone will agree with, we all want financial freedom, right? Woo! Yeah. We all want financial freedom. But here's what's interesting about this dichotomy is if you want freedom, the way to get there is through discipline. So if you want financial freedom, you gotta have the discipline to work hard. You gotta have the discipline to save your money. You gotta have the discipline to invest your money properly. You gotta have the discipline not to buy stupid things that you don't even need. Bueno, acaba de terminar el día uno de Final Hacking Live. Terminó con la charla de Joko Willing. Sol, ¿qué te pareció Joko? Sin palabras. <laughs> Sí, para la... <risa> este, o sea, tantas cosas que evaluar de verdad de los negocios. Sí. Tema no, de leadership, bien. tema de procesos, <risa> tema de atreverse. Así es. Demasiadas cosas. Increíble los paralelos entre la guerra y los negocios. O sea, bueno, no es la primera vez que escucho eso, pero desde la perspectiva de alguien que estuvo ahí, <risa> fue bastante, bastante impresionante. Así que les recomiendo que lo busquen, seguramente en YouTube van a encontrar charlas de él, probablemente con sus títulos por ahí, pero espero que hayas disfrutado el pedacito que te compartí acá en el blog. Ahora ya estamos finalizando el día y con esto vamos a cerrar la transmisión por ahora, a menos que me encuentre con alguien y lo invite al blog. Seguimos mañana.